So it is my joy to welcome beloved Reverend Karen Russo, the founder of the Money Keys that shares her wisdom with the world and today with us. Please help me welcome my oh, beloved friend, Reverend thank Karen. You. Oh, my goodness. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening to the New Vision Spiritual Center. I'm so grateful to be here with every single one of you and just appreciating everything that's been uh, contributed so that the life we have right now is this. Our message this morning is spiritual resilience. So we're going to be with spiritual principles, ideas that are spiritually true, as well as practical strategies and ideas, yes, for the purpose of reducing stress, reducing fear, reducing anxiety, about the human condition right now, but also, and mostly, for the realization of what is true, for the realization of the spirit, so that we can be a beneficial presence to a world that, oh yes, needs us at our best. So are you up for that? Yes. So here in the sanctuary, they say yes. And as we have this conversation, if you're one who likes to chat into the live stream, please do. If you're a yes for spiritual resilience, please say so. And uh, why now? Why is this so important? So um, there is, in the human condition, challenges, problems, circumstance. And now we experience something that some label pandemic. And... It's real as a human experience. And there's a lot that's out there that's very helpful, that lets us know as human beings, when things like this happen, we have human reactions. So I saw this one uh, very helpful article that said, human minds are trained to look for the negative. Human minds, human beings, will react with fear and go into protective mode and that human beings, you know what we like? We like certainty. And that what is occurring right now gives us an opportunity on all those levels. Fear arises and all of a sudden people are like in their reptilian brain hoarding paper products and lots of fear. We also see that uh, negativity can show up as catastrophizing and not being able to handle the facts. And then we also see, with a lot of compassion, a lot of compassion, that we want certainty at a time when things are uncertain. And what I want to say is, I love that the reading from yet another Karen, I mean, if anyone wants someone to go and speak to the manager, there's a Karen somewhere who will do it for you. That beautiful reading from the practitioner that Reverend Leslie shared reminds us that we sometimes don't know about what circumstances are bringing forward for us, right? You see, human life is not certain. And human existence has threats. And there's always an up and a down and a positive and a negative in human experience. That doesn't mean it's not beautiful and profound. We'll talk about that today. But uh, this is a message that is not just about our humanity. One of the things that's coming up now that is a beautiful and good thing is there is a lot that's coming through that helps us with personal growth. Here's a time where you can be even more productive and efficient. Or uh, we see, see things about human potential, you know, that we can improve our potential. Or we see things like uh, this is a good time for self-improvement. And yet, self-improvement, human potential, personal growth, it leaves us with a self, with a person, with a human. And although, oh, we want to be the best we can be, it is not enough to just count on our humanity trying harder at a time like this. So that is why we are speaking about spiritual resilience. 
And we can use our beautiful human experience as a symbol for what's spiritually true. So we brought this beautiful image of the, uh, the desert with the yellow flowers emerging because right in the midst of pandemic and virus and challenge and all that we see for humans and economies and peoples, for all of that, in the midst of that, the birds are still singing and the babies are laughing. And thank you for those that are sharing those on Facebook. I want, I want to see, you know, 38-second videos of babies laughing all the time, right? Yeah, the birds are singing, the babies are laughing, and the flowers are coming through, even in the midst of all of this. And that's what a spiritual, a spiritual reality is showing us. So a spiritual reality is a reality that is of the divine. And that's what we're going we're gonna to dive into here. And I invite you to bring to this conversation just the, the purest form of your desire for a greater truth. And um, also, be sure to place upon the altar of your awareness whatever is up for you, whether it's a worry, a fear, a challenge, a question. So let it all be welcome in this conversation. And we're going to begin with strength. Strength. So spiritual resilience, the ability to be flexible and responsive without being reactive and fixed, reveals to us strength. And when I say spiritual strength, I'm referring to the capacity we have for inclusivity. So our teaching, the New Vision Center is part of the, the religious science, science of mind tradition, which is a part of the family of new thought traditions that are about 150 years old. Um, many will also say new thought is ancient wisdom, perennial truths. But these are traditions that include the unified ideas that are across all religions, include scientific principles that you can experiment with about how things work, and philosophic ideas. Why is life the way that it is? And in our science of mind teaching, one of the profound, there's two profound ideas. One is love, or the unity of all, and the other is law, and I'm going to speak about both today. So unity is the principle that all of life is an interconnected whole. We get strength from the idea of unity when we are aware that we are spiritual beings, yes, here in the human dimension. And as a spiritual being, we have the capacity to include all that we are experiencing within our awareness. So what that means is we do not turn away from pain and challenge in the human condition. So I really want you to hear that. Um, some spiritual traditions and some of the things that you may be seeing will, um, will rely on the idea that this uh, plane of matter is not real. And sometimes when that's heard, people feel like um, being gaslit almost. Like if it's not real, like, like I, I, can't, I can't be here, then I can't be included. And we believe in inclusivity, that human experience is real as far as it is real. And yet, we have infinite potentiality, infinite capacity, so that we can include the lightness and the dark. We can include the up and the down. We are made in the image and likeness of an infinite spirit. So what that does is, I just invite you to like, Open it up and let yourself be aware that your own personal life and human life is more than this experience right now, March 2020. Just even, just the, 
the mental and energetic experiment of saying, I have been through challenges, starts to make you aware that you're more than your current challenges. I know you and I, all of us, have been through the death of a beloved, or an addiction in the body, or the loss of a job, or the grief of betrayal, that we have, we have been through, and some, you know, there's no degree for all of this, but some have been through things more dynamic, more, more extreme than others. We've, we are more than this moment right now. So let that inclusivity, like, stretch you in terms of strength. Another aspect of the spirit that shows us our strength is that God is timeless. So if we think about the nature of timelessness, what we start to be aware of is there's more than just this moment. And there's only this moment. So one of the ideas of the science of mind is that the, uh, the past has no precedent over what is possible. And what that helps us understand is, um, while it's tempting to look at facts and charts that show something here now and it's going to be there later, is that we also want to be in tune with the idea of, yes, the miraculous is possible. And we do not have a certainty that a limitation now will be a limitation later. There's something about understanding the timelessness of life that really also increases our, our strength, our fierceness, our capacity. And finally, about strength, it's about our equanimity, our capacity to be not a jerk, in the human condition, and our capacity to be less reactive to what is going on or not going on around us. So um, many spiritual traditions, and what's beautiful about the science of mind is um, at the time, Dr. Ernest Holmes, the beginning of the 20th century, it was radical that he was bringing in the thoughts of the East. So he was reading the Vedas and bringing uh, Sri Aurobindo and bringing ideas from Eastern philosophies along with Christianity and Judaism and the Abrahamic traditions of Western, bringing them together. One of the beautiful things the Eastern traditions can teach us is the idea of equanimity, that um, this too shall pass, that everything is impermanent, that life is a moment-by-moment moment releasing of what is, because what is will always change. And yet, what we'll bring in there is that there is something that is changeless in the midst of that which changes. So when you are practicing equanimity, what happens is not that you don't care that, you know, safe at home looks different in this city or that city, or that things are coming or going. Not that you don't care, but that you can find a place that is able to accept what is happening without necessarily agreeing with it. So that's one of the things, it's a profound capacity to have, is that I can accept facts and circumstances without liking them or agreeing with them, but my acceptance that, that this is what is in this moment allows my shoulders to go down, my mind to quiet. I'm less of a reptilian, you know, combative person where the paper products are, and I'm more of someone who can be a beneficial presence. So that's our spiritual strength. Do you see your own spiritual strength, and do you agree that others have it? If so, say yes. And put that in the chat if you're a yes for strength. Because I think at some level, of course, we all are. And the next aspect of our spiritual resilience is our creativity. So the other big idea in the science of mind is that consciousness is creative. And consciousness is the sum total of our thought, emotion, held in place by our conversation and our attention. It's our patterns of thinking. 
our consciousness is creative. And this is where um, spiritual practice is our vehicle for attuning our consciousness to what is true. So I um, just so appreciate, you know, when Holly was singing, I am opening myself to love, I could literally just feel my own body, and I'm sure you all could just feel the energy, like the sound so beautiful, the energy so high, and that, to me, lifts what's called my vibration, the energetic frequency. We're all energetic beings. I could feel it lifting. We want to be engaged in things that lift our energetic frequency. Always, and for some would say, especially right now. So that's where we are the ones who get to choose. When I, whenever I think of the, the idea of spiritual creativity, the resilience comes from our free will, our capacity to choose. So what are you choosing for your spiritual practice now. So um, it's pretty beautiful that the New Vision Center has given you pretty much morning to evening, seven days a week. You can be on a Zoom where people are either meditating or praying or Friday night games or munch and mingles or there's so many ways that this beautiful community has said, we want to meet you where you are and be in community to lift one another. I'd say take advantage of that. You'll see many, many people are choosing to be creative, whether it's the celebrities, or the one I was laughing about this morning was, um, I think it was Chris Mann doing, um, he was taking Adele's song, Hello, Hello from the Inside on the plastic window. It was great, you know. Uh, so many celebrities, so many people like you, are taking your music, your art, your gifts to be able to share so that others will laugh or be uplifted. Keep doing it. Your creativity matters. One of the reasons our creativity matters is that uh, we might need it more than we suspect. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I have a regular spiritual practice, but one of the things I noticed is um, I've had real challenges in the last few weeks. I mean, perhaps it is just me, but I'm suspecting that others of you are experiencing this as well. Like, like um, and I tend to be more of a morning person, you know, so in the morning it's high, and then toward the end of the day it's, you know, somebody in the house is looking for chips and, you know, pretty much, you know, snapping at the big fella. And it's not where I think I should be, you know, I think I should be in better shape than that. And uh, <laughs> so we started to do an evening meditation, beautiful practice. There are hundreds of people on this particular practice in the evening. And the first night that I, I sat to meditate in a meditation practice I'd done many times before, all I could feel was just this like unbelievable fatigue, like smirching out of my pores. I was like, what is this? I didn't even realize how much fatigue was in my energy. The next uh, time that I did it, I renamed my meditation chair to the agitation station because it was like, you know, they say monkey mind. It's like a monkey who'd been fed nothing but organic coffee and Twitter and pictures of coronaviruses. Like, just, you know, like the agitation was like unprecedented. And yet I was really grateful. It's like, so now in the, the evening meditation was just my intention to have that evening meditation more frequent to just, I just completely released any sense of judgment for what comes because it's like, thank God. God for being God, that I am sitting here doing this so that this stuff can be released. So lean into your spiritual practice because you may be needing it more than you realize. The other piece about why to lean in is because consciousness creates by law. What we attend to when we pray, it is not just to cope with conditions. We pray to deliberately create the world experience that we desire, that is our nature. Our minds are one with the mind of God, the creative, infinite presence of God. Let us not worry about Reverend Leslie's health. Let us pray to know her wholeness. So that is true for anyone you have anxiety, fear, or concern about. I encourage you right now, put it in there 
Whose wholeness are you knowing? Whose abundance do you stand for? Whose right action and justice do you care about? Get that in there because that creativity is powerful. And the final piece of our spiritual resilience is service. So remember I said it was important to be a good human. Oh, it's important to be a good human. Partly why it's important to be a good human is because we feel better when we stop thinking about ourselves and we start to make a difference to other people. And so I encourage you to find where can you be of a benefit to others right now. One of the best places to start is to get out of any sense of self-pity and to move into more gratitude for what we have. So there's some beautiful things going around that say, if I am inconvenienced, let me think of the person who is shelterless. If I um, have challenges, let me remember that others are in much more desperate state. Not to feel bad, but to get a right-sized sense of what and who we are, that helps us to then be able to say, how can I make a difference? And many will think you know, um, that there's not much you can do if you maybe can't give financially, let's say. But here's what I would say. There is much you can do. So for you to pray or care about another, if you are overwhelmed, you know, and it's hard. I understand. I heard uh, Governor Cuomo said, I live alone and I'm annoyed with the dog. You know, it is hard for some of us to be, like, in, and yet we might want to be the one who's willing to Zoom or call or connect with someone who's living alone. So think of the ways that you can be of service, and I would say if you've got ideas there, put them into the live stream. If you know of places, New Vision is definitely about how can we serve our community and the larger community. So if you know where there are places to be of service, my goodness, lean in. Because the service, the giving, it reminds us that we are one with something greater, which includes abundance. I heard a beautiful teaching where this woman said, right now, consciousness is our medicine. Consciousness is our supply. Consciousness is our truth. So our spiritual resilience relies on this, our strength, our creativity, and our service. I'm going to end with a quote, and then we'll pray about this. So there's a beautiful quote from Dr. Ernest Holmes that reminds us who we are. So Dr. Holmes says, in all planes that exist and deep within the self, hidden and yet felt, there is a high priest, a high priestess, ready to conduct us to the sacred and secret chamber of the self, where God and humanity are one. The search for union passes into the realization, not that we are just with or in, but that we are of God. One with or one in implies separation. The great realization is that we are of that which is. The great realization is that we are of that which is. The great realization is that we are of that which is. That is the awareness of our spiritual truth when realized absolutely contributes to us being exactly the medicine that the world needs right now. So we're going to move and take this into prayer. And so I encourage you, if you are a practitioner of religious science or a minister, to please stand with me, so to stand in your wherever you are, if you're home or if you're watching this later, to stand, to rise in consciousness. I also consciously bring in the prayer requests that have been placed into the chat, that have been emailed, that have been left for the New Vision Center prayer ministry. I also open up to bless and include in this prayer all people, all religious traditions, anyone who turns to the truth, whether they are in an online mosque, synagogue, temple, church, yoga mat, anywhere that anyone is turning to the truth, whatever path they are on, they are our spiritual family. 
And together we rise up in our awareness. We rise up to the realization that God is and God is all there is. That God is the infinite, creative, abundant, truth-filled reality that is my reality, it is your reality, it is our reality. We are one with the infinite. We are spiritual beings, timeless, infinite, creative, wild, powerful, free. And from that awareness, I speak a word. I claim and accept with such conviction that wholeness is the order of the day. That healing, the revelation of wholeness, is happening right now. I consciously claim, accept, and know peace of mind, supply, right action, energy, justice, and fairness for every helper, healthcare professional, everyone who is of service to the healing of the sick, the ill, the injured, everywhere. I claim that wholeness and healing are happening now. I also affirm that there is a love and an inclusiveness and a compassion that rises up in our spiritual human family where borders of nationality and race and ethnicity and religion, all of that falls away and we see one another, human family. We help, we care, we love because we are all connected. And I claim that this message brings forward the strength, creativity, and service that each and every one of us needs right now to be both flexible, accepting, and of maximum benefit to the places where we are called to shine our lights, give our gifts, and make a difference. So I am so grateful. I am so grateful that this prayer is operated upon by law, that it is a yes in the heart and mind of the infinite, and so I release this word. I trust the perfect action of God's law. I know what is spoken is so. We let it be. And together we say, and so it is.